Apple's biggest competitor is Samsung, or at least it's arguably Samsung. And before everyone starts saying, hey, this is an Android rumors, you you know the deal. We cover the competition to see what other companies are releasing. And Samsung's latest round of flagships are officially available. And I was able to check them out last week ahead of the actual event that is today. And I wanted to give you an update on what's new from Samsung's unpacked event. Now, this time of the year for Samsung is usually an update to its foldables. Uh, and so that's exactly what we got, which the most interesting update is what we'll start with first. And that's the Galaxy Z Flip. Now I have personally never owned Samsung's flip style. I've always gone for the fold. Uh, and this is actually Oppo's um, folding phone version where it you know flips out like this. Um, but one of the biggest things that I, one of the reasons why I never wanted to go for a Z Flip was because of the cover screen. It was like a tiny little, you know, you could just see a little bit of information, but nothing crazy. And then Oppo came out with this one where you have this like widget based screen here. It's vertical. It's not the whole thing. And then Motorola came out with its own version where you could use the full front part of this little display here and you can run full-sized apps. Now, Samsung actually calls that little portion the flex window. I was always calling it a cover screen, but it's now 3.78 times larger than the last generation. And it provides far more customization options, new widgets, etc., all without the need to unfold the actual phone. So this is what, again, has been keeping me back from trying this phone out full time because I do like the idea of having a normal sized device and then folding it in half and it's just a much smaller form factor to carry around. Um, and so this was a more intriguing option, but now that we have more of like the full part of the display, that is much more intriguing to me. And being able to get information and interact with apps and have a full size keyboard and type out messages is just so nice on that flex window. Now it's still not full access to every app and the full app like the Motorola Razr, which I talked about earlier. Um, but here it's more of a widget based like the Oppo phone where you do get you know, different glanceable cards, but it's a lot more in depth, way more information. And there are a few other apps that are available right now, like WhatsApp and even YouTube, where I was actually able to browse what seemed like the full app of YouTube and go on shorts or actually watch a full video. So it's a step in the right direction and you just have far more glanceable information and functionality out of the flex window, which is a huge bonus to me. And that really is the new update for the Z Flip 5. Uh, you get that new larger window, which gives you uh, better selfies when you're taking the rear camera selfies, you have more screen real estate. The dual preview is where the other person can see the screen when you're taking a picture of them. They have more screen real estate to look at. And uh, speaking of the camera, the Z Flip 5 also adds new AI improvements to its software image processing. Uh, so this includes new nightography capabilities and a better 10X digital zoom. Samsung also updated its Z Fold. So now we have the Z Fold 5. Uh, this is the 4, um, but it really looks almost exactly the same. The biggest thing that the biggest new feature to the design, the biggest update is that you see this right here, it doesn't quite fold flat. Well, now it does fold flat, just like the Pixel Fold, which we also just checked out recently. You can click the card here in the upper right corner if you want to see our review. Um, and so yeah, it folds flat. It does have the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor and a new generation S Pen Fold Edition, which is far more compact and slim, allowing for a new slimmer S Pen case, which you can see here is basically flush with the actual back of the phone and the case. As you can see, this one right here, this was the old case and it sticks out a lot. So huge improvements to that. Uh, but otherwise you still get multi-window support. Uh, the taskbar has been improved to dynamically switch between uh, frequently and most used apps. And the most used apps recommendations are now up to four apps, which, you know, some minor quality of life software tweaks, but you can still have up to three different apps going at the same time, bunch of apps kind of, you know, being floating around in floating windows. And really that's the biggest updates to the Galaxy Fold 5, just some internal boosts and uh, that slight design change with the hinge, but things are as strong as ever. And if you're a fan of the Z Fold and you haven't picked one up yet, but you've been like admiring from afar, maybe a fan from afar, I think the five is the best iteration yet, obviously, and being able to fold flat is a nice update. Samsung also updated its Galaxy Watch lineup. So now you get the Galaxy Watch 6 and Watch 6 Classic. And I think I'm gonna do a full comparison to the Apple Watch or the Apple Watch Ultra. So let me know which one you think I should focus on, the 6 or the 6 Classic. These watches look really good in my opinion. They're sleek, minimal round watches, which really pull me in because I just love a good round watch. 
And I also haven't checked out a Samsung smartwatch in a while and didn't even realize that they have the ability to monitor your blood pressure, which is definitely something new in a smartwatch that I have never used before and something that's been rumored for Apple watches for some time now. But these new watches are also improving sleep and wellness features. Uh, they now offer more in-depth analysis of sleep score factors like total sleep time, cycle, awake time, etc. There's sleep coaching to give you better insights so that you can put that into action. But not only are there sleep updates, but health updates like body composition, which will measure key elements of the body like skeletal muscle, basal metabolic rate, body water and fat percentage, and so much more. There's a new personalized heart rate zone feature to give runners more in-depth analysis so that you can better see your individual capabilities. And it defines five optimal running intensity levels so that you can decide which level you want to be at for whichever goals you're trying to achieve during your run. There's also a new irregular heart rhythm notification, menstrual cycle tracking, and fall detection, which if those all sound familiar, it's making the Watch 6 series much more in line with the Apple Watch's recent capabilities. Not to mention just the larger display and just it's an all around brighter, more vibrant display. Each of these watches have, you know, kind of an updated look, reduced bezels. If you get the classic, you still get that really nice rotating bezel here. And you can just navigate through the OS so much better than having to swipe around. Um, and it offers a larger 47 millimeter model. And then last but not least, the Galaxy Tab S9 lineup got a refresh. This is another product category that we don't really check out all too often, but I think we should because these tablets look and feel amazing. Not to mention, it's a big, beautiful OLED tablet that's, you know, 120 hertz display and 14.6 inches, which is quite a few inches larger than the largest iPad Pro. These tablets are beautiful, and if you want to see a video of this larger Tab S9 Ultra compared to the latest iPad Pro, let me know in the comments down below. But that was Samsung's Unpack. There's a lot of little updates and quality of life improvements to an already fantastic product lineup, including its very popular foldable lineup, which Samsung is undoubtedly leading the industry, at least right here in the US, um, with its foldables. Google just released one. That's really the only other major U.S. manufacturer to have released a foldable device in the U.S. Um, and so looking towards Apple and when Apple might be able to do that, I've been dying for a foldable, at least either this kind, if they want to do this, um, or, you know, you can do a foldable like tablet phone style. There are a lot of rumors pointing towards a foldable iPad. I think something recently came out about that. But let me know in the comments down below what you think of Samsung's latest foldables, latest watches and tablets. But also, if you're somebody who's looking at jumping ship and going to one of these style foldable devices, let me know in the comment section down below which one you are looking at. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.